Hello everyone, I'm Landon Schlungen. Today we're going to learn CS animation by building a Ferris wheel. This one is only 29 problems. If you don't know me, I've got about two years of professional web development experience as a software engineer at a couple of different companies. And uh, I've been doing free code camp for a while. This is my second time going through it and it should be fun to do. All right. So this one, you can use CSS animation to draw attention to specific sections of your web page and make it more engaging. In this course, we'll build a Ferris wheel and we'll learn how to use CSS to animate elements, transform them, and adjust their speed. All right, so CSS animation is definitely very cool to use and uh, very useful if you want to wow any users of your web page. All right, so it looks like we're going to be making this a uh, spinning Ferris wheel with changing color boxes. All right, let's start coding. All right, begin with the standard boilerplates. All right, so we've done this many of times before. Now we just have to add doc type HTML. And then underneath that, we need our HTML tags. HTML. And then inside of our HTML tags, we need a body and a head. So we're going to go head first. And, and then inside of our head, we need a meta. So we're going to go meta with a char set to UTF-8. UTF-8. And then we need another meta tag in here. And I don't remember again what exactly we need in that, but we also need a body. So we're gonna go body slash body. And let's see, let's see here, what else do we need? We need a link to our style sheet. So we're gonna go link rel equals style sheet. And then href equal to style.css or styles, yeah, styles.css. Close that up, and then let's see here, the title. We need a title of Ferris wheel, Ferris wheel, backslash title. There we go. And I think that's about it. I just need to see what this meta tag is all about. Oh, I need HTML lang, in, lang of English. There we go. Let's see here. Oh, that's all of it? Oh, okay, it doesn't need the viewport yet. Let's see if they want it. No, never mind. Okay, cool. Add a div within your body elements and give it a class of wheel. All right, so we're going to go div class of wheel. Div, oh man, div class equals wheel. And close that up. And inside the div, we need six span elements. All right, so we're going to go span each with a class set to line. Looks like class equals line. Close up this span, and then we need six of them with a class and six div elements with a class set to cabin and six div. Okay, so I need, I don't know if it matters what order we put them in. So I'm just gonna do six of these and then we're gonna make one of a div of class cabin. Cabin like so, slash div. And then we need six of these as well, so. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's see if that works. That does awesome. All right, create a selector for your wheel element. All right, so just go dot wheel to grab that. Start by setting the border, no problem, to two pixels solid black and the border radius to 50%. All right, easy enough, 50%, there we go. And the margin left to 50 pixels. 50 pixels like so. Save that. Interesting. That's what it made so far. Okay. Cool, cool. Let's keep going. Ask me later. Set the position property of the wheel selector to absolute. Yep, I kind of thought so. All right. So position to absolute like so. Set the height and width to 55 VW. So height to 55 V width. Uh, view width and width to 55 view width. So 55 view width. So 55% of the view screen. Yeah, something like that. All right, it looks like it made a circle because border radius is 50%. Yeah, okay, cool. Control enter. All right, give your wheel selector max height and max width property. All right, so we're gonna go max height of 500 pixels. All right, and max width of 500 pixels. All right, I think that's all. Yep, create a selector for your line element. So we're gonna go dot line, 
start by setting the background color, background color to black, and then the width to 50%, and the height to two pixels. All right, so that's our line, I guess. Cool, cool. Set the line selector position property to absolute. All right, so we're gonna go position to absolute, and then left to 50%. And top to 50%. All right, there's our line. So there we go. Let's go. The transform origin property is used to set the points around which the, the CSS transformation is applied. For example, when performing a rotate, the transform origin determines around which point the element is rotated. Oh, okay. Give the line selector transform origin property of 0%, 0%. Okay, so transform origin. Form origin of 0%, 0%. So I'm guessing that's 0% on the y and then 0% on the x. Yeah. 0% from, oh, 0% from the left, 0% from the top. Okay. Let's check that. Cool. All right. Create a selector to target your second line item. Uh, set the transform property to rotate 60 degrees. So grab our second line item. Um, okay. So line. Uh, it's a pseudo selector nth of type is it uh nth of type i think i don't know maybe it will help me out but i think it's something like that and then we need transform transform of rotate 60 degrees and then we need never mind remember that transform property allows you to manipulate the shape of an element in this case using the rotate 60 degrees value will rotate the element around its transform origin point by 60 degrees clockwise uh, let's see here i need nth of type two i did that right oh never mind i just need a single colon oh my gosh look at that it's so beautiful all right so we need to do the same thing i think all the way up to six okay Fourth, fifth, sixth, and then 120, 180. Okay, so I can just copy this and just bring it down a few times. All right, so this one's going to be 120. And then we can copy this again a few times. So four times, yeah. This has to be three, uh, four, and five, and six. And then this is 120, 180, uh, 240, 24, and uh, what is it? 300. Yeah, there we go. 300. And there we go. There's our beautiful wheel. Let's go. Create a cabin selector. Set the background color to re red. All right, dot cabin. And a background color to red. And a width of 20%. And a height of 20%. There we go. Uh, control enter keep going give the cabin a position of absolute all right position absolute and a border of two pixels solid and i think it's black by default but i think i can just add black oh never mind it doesn't want that man screw you it's gonna be black anyways all right set the cabin to have a transform origin property of 50 percent zero percent all right Transform origin of 50%, 0%. And then this will set the origin point to be offset 50% from the left and 0% from the top. So that's like a carriage leg. Hey. All right. Time to position the cabins around the wheel. Select the first cabin elements. All right. So dot cabin, the first one. So end of type of one i think and then set the right property to negative 8.5 percent and then the top to 50 percent like so hey there it is sweet uh control shift in no uh, never mind control enter yeah there we go continuing the pattern select the following cabin elements and apply the specific rules to them great okay give me this and let's start pumping these out all right we need two, and this one is 17 and 93 and a half. 17, 93 and a half. 
Okay, and then we need to copy this down a few times. Number three is going to be uh, 67 and 93 and a half. All right, 67. And then number four is going to be negative eight and a half. All right, negative 8.5 for number four. And also 50%. All right, 50%, and then we need 17 and 7 for number 5, 17 and 7, and then we need number 6 is going to be 17 and 7 as well. What? Really? Oh, oh are you kidding me? Left and right? Oh my god. Ah, uh, okay. I gotta change some of those properties. I think this is left. Left. Okay, left of negative eight and a half. All right, so this is left. Let's see here, right to right. Okay, I think that's fine. It should work, and it seems to look right, so that's also a good sign. All right, the key, the at keyframes at rule is used to define the flow of a CSS animation. Within the at keyframes rule, you can create selectors for specific points in the animation sequence, such as 0% or 25%, or use from and to to define the start and end of the sequence. At keyframes rules require a name to be assigned to them, which you would use in other rules to reference. For example, the at keyframes free code camp rule would be named free code camp. Time to start animating. Create a at keyframes rule named wheel. All right, so we go at keyframes uh, wheel, I think. And then open it up. I think that's what it is. Sweet. All right. All right. You now need to define how your animation should start. To do this, create a zero percent rule within your create keyframes rule. All right. The properties you set in this nested selector will apply at the beginning of your animation. As an example, this would be a twelve percent rule. All right. At twelve percent, make the color green. Uh, create a zero percent rule. All right. So just go. 0% and then open that up and then that's it for this one. Yep. Okay. All right. Give it a transform property set to rotate zero degrees. All right. So transform rotate of zero degrees. All right. So right at the start, rotate it by nothing. And then we're going to add some more to these. So at a hundred percent, it's going to rotate all the way around. I think. Yeah. So I think comma or maybe not. No comma or comma. I think we need a comma. Uh, and then 100%. Open this up. Maybe no comma. I guess not. And then we need transform again. So let's just grab this. And bring it down. And we need 360. All right. Save that and check it. All right, step 20, the animation name properties used to link a keyframes rule to a CSS selector. The value of this property should match the name of the keyframes rule. Give your wheel selector an animation name property set to wheel. All right, so here's our animation down here. Keyframes wheel. Now we have to add it to our actual uh, wheel class. So we do that with animation name. So I'm just going to add that at the top. Animation name equals wheel. And then the animation duration is how long we want to set it. Uh, set it to 10 seconds. All right, so 10 seconds it will go around. All right, sweet. Look at that. It's moving. Moving along. Let's go. All right, the animation iteration count property sets how many times your animation should repeat. This can be set to a number or to infinite to indefinitely repeat the animation. Your Ferris wheel should never stop. So set the wheel selector to animation iteration count infinite. All right, so down here, or I'm just going to add it up here so I can read it while I'm typing. Animation timing function. Actually, iteration count. What am I doing? Uh, animation iteration count. Uh, let's grab this. Iteration count of infinites. Infinite. There we go. So now it will spin forever. Forever and ever. The animation timing function property sets how an, the animation should progress over time. There are a few different values for this property, but you want the Ferris wheel animation to run at the same rate from start to finish. Set it to linear. Okay. 
animation timing function to linear. Right now it must be like easing out or something, but now it's linear so it will be very consistent while it's spinning instead of being fast and then slow and then faster, whatever it was doing before. All right, create another at keyframes rule with the name cabins. All right, at keyframes cabins. Right, inside of here, uh, do 0% and 100% and do transform as well. So we're just going to copy this for now and then change it up a little bit here. So, uh, but set the transform property of the 100% selector to rotate negative 360. All right, so this way. And it doesn't do anything yet because we have to add it to that class. So on the cabin, we need that animation name. Yeah. Animation name of cabins. Like so. And now they should start spinning. Maybe not. And animation duration. Oh, I, that's why I need animation duration of, what do I want? 10 seconds? Same thing. All right. Now they should spin. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. And then we need animation timing function and property. Okay. Oh, I can do it all in one. Yeah, that's what it wants. Okay, so animation. We can just have an, one animation property, which will be cabins of 10 seconds and linear and infinite. Yeah, there we go. Shorthand. There we go. So it does all of them at once. That is awesome. Okay, I think that's all we need. I did it wrong. Uh, animation, cabins, 10 seconds, linear infinites. What did I do wrong? Uh, animation. In that order. Yeah, I know. Animation. Cabins, 10 seconds, linear infinite. Infinite, I spelled wrong. There we go. There we go. Now it's spinning correctly. All right, to make your cabin animation seem more like a natural swinging motion, you can use the ease in out timing function. All right, so instead of linear, we're going to go ease in out. Yeah, ease in out. You cool. Awesome. All right, you can use keyframes rule to control more than just the transformation of an element. In the 0% selector of your keyframes cabin, set the background color to yellow. Yeah, background color to yellow. All right, so it will change. I'm guessing we're gonna change the color. Yeah, to purple, from yellow to purple. So, oh, also this is going to be a 50% selector. Okay, so right here, we're gonna go 50% and background color to purple in here, I believe. Purple, like so. So it'll change from yellow to purple. And then because the animation is on an infinite loop and the start and end colors are not the same, the transition appears jerky when it switches back to yellow from red. To f start fixing this, remove the background color from your 0% selector. Okay, remove that. Create a new 25% selector in between them. All right, 25%. Give the new selector the background color to yellow. Background color to yellow. We got the Minnesota Vikings colors, yellow and purple. <laughs> All right, finally, create a new 75% selector between your 50% and 100% selectors. All right, so 75% right here. And we need that set to yellow. So we can just grab this and move it down. All right. And that's it. All right, the next thing we're building is this penguin. And that says I heart CSS. <laughs> okay. So stay tuned for that. Uh, what we just finished is this Ferris wheel. Uh, hopefully you learned something. Uh, the keyframes animations are, uh, they can be useful, although I don't really use them too much. But anyways, if you liked the video, make sure to like it. Make sure to subscribe. Leave a comment if you have any questions. And I will see you next time. All right. Peace out. Bye.